finally, Zenless Zone Zero reached out to us and asked me to review some of their cinematics. And as a professional animator, they also asked me to make an animation for them, which we did over on the Dueling Goo channel. So naturally, I have some strong opinions about cinematics. So I had my editor pick out six cinematics for me to react to, which I haven't seen before. And we're going to break down exactly what makes them so good and what makes them not so good. Let's take a look. Oh, that's so cool already. Oh, what the? <laughs> My lungs can't handle this, bro. This is crazy. She's a soul sword. Oh my god. It's like that shot we did with Raiden in Progenitor 3. <laughs> oh! Impact frames. Impact frames! Let's go! With heals. Wait, that was crazy. So this alone is crazy. Just from a gyroscopic motion perspective alone, this is absolutely beautiful. It's super clean. Look at all the secondary movement. Everything has this drag behind it, which spins so perfectly with her entire body and is emphasized with this air tunnel tornado effect. Great props to the effects team and accentuates her movement so well. And then she lands in such a great pose. I mean, look at the low focal length of this pose, right? Her foot is really big. It's really dynamic. It's just beautiful. Right into this anticipation, You'll notice that there's actually a bit of drag here. She doesn't immediately come up. They wait a little bit right here just to bring that anticipation up. Just enough time to bring this slash to a huge payoff. And boy, does it do that. Now, this part, this is actually a technique similar to what we've done before. What I like to call a treadmill shot. This treadmill shot is basically when the background moves, but the character doesn't move in camera space. Notice how still she is. They really just decided to accentuate this pose like crazy, right? So what this does specifically, these kicks, is that it holds the pose similar to how you would see it in 2D, which makes it feel really, really snappy and really dynamic. So notice how it just it just holds the pose for a few frames. In 3D, you would not have that, but in 2D, you would definitely have those poses held for extra impact. And they're, they're mimicking that here really, really well. The camera's rotating, but she's not. And the reason is because she's parented to camera. So this is a very common technique with 3D trying to mimic 2D, especially with super fast moving backgrounds. You parent the characters to the camera so that it acts more like a 2D cell. Because when people draw 2D characters, it just stays in camera spaces and the background will move behind them. And that's mimicking making that exact feeling. I mean, I don't even know what to say. This is just amazing. This is just really, really good effects work, to be fair. Like, there's actually not any animation going on here except for the effects. So to be fair, that's the effects artist doing an amazing job. But the amount of control they're able to show with this character just in this amount of time, the way they do it is by having all these really, really strong holds in her poses. Like right here, this sword does not move because she has perfect control of her sword. That's what's being conveyed in the animation and in the exaggeration of the stylization even more so with that. So she lands in such a great way. She's not landing with absolutely no recoil at all, but she basically lands as if she is already completely balanced and has no intention of rebalancing herself. Normally when people land, they have like a slight adjustment of their feet. Not this girl. She's also a cat, so that makes sense. But it's really well portrayed, like super well portrayed. Oh, so good. Look at these frames. Yes, these are hand-drawn frames. Every single one of these. Really elevates the piece, absolutely. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I actually do have a small gripe with this particular landing animation, even though it's fantastic. The good things is that like it's super dynamic, super low focal length, feels really good, really impactful because it's so sudden. My only complaint is that the shoe just completely hides the silhouette of her character. I kind of wish there was like a little bit of her other foot visible. You know, I almost kind of wish it was like here instead, and then you could see her foot over here. So this would not cover up her entire head and her entire body. That would be an ideal scenario, but it's a small nitpick ultimately. That's true. A panty shot would be bad. That does does make sense. That's probably why they did it. What's next? Anbi's falling from a... Whoa. Oh, she fell into a rift. That's convenient. She's so cool. Oh my god, she's so cool. The hell, dude? She should be dead. 
<laughs> the most interesting thing about this shot, it's a Dutch angle. Dutch angles are something we've talked about before, but it's always done deliberately. And most of the time, it's done specifically to disorient the viewer. The reason why they put this here is because you don't know which way's up. And it's supposed to be this disorienting transition to basically a sideways portal. And you're like, oh shoot, it's sideways. I think it's a really cool way that they demonstrated that because now if you notice on this end, as they went to the other side, it is now angled the other way, which makes you orient yourself. You're, oh, that's the ground. They keep this Dutch angle up for a while and then they just go crazy with it. They're like, nah, we're going to fly around and rotate the whole time. Also, by the way, this is a really interesting Dutch angle as well. This is not a severe. You have this really cool effect here where when she's sliding backwards, her momentum is slowing down against the slope. It's kind of a way to show that someone's slowing down visually and emphasize it because you're actually going uphill, which allows the quote unquote screen gravity to slow them down. It's something I do all the time as well. It's it's a very, very useful tactic directing wise. They really break the laws of gravity in that falling shot. When is it appropriate to do that? The answer to that is actually interesting. There's two separate frames of reference when you watch a movie. There is world space and screen space. The camera's spinning around and around and around technically is breaking the laws of physics in camera space. And then for the world space, she's technically just going in a straight line. So you register it as this law breaking thing, but actually it's it's technically okay. As long as you know where screen space is, you can fly in real life. <laughs> exactly. They're doing some good stuff there, but I kind of want to see more character animation. So let's see what we got. <laughs> Yo! Oh, oh. Damn! What the anime opening? Oh, they're so bouncy. I love it, dude. Oh my god. Lightning rod? I love how Billy's so far away, dude. Oh, it's his name's Proxy. <laughs> oh, it's a sword. Impact frames, let's go, dude. Guys, real quick, if this is not so incredibly trigger-coded, I don't know what is, dude. This is literally the Gynax post. I honestly feel like trigger is probably one of the biggest inspirations for the ZZ style. Dude, look at this. He just literally just flies in space. He's parented the camera again. Look at that. See how his foot is sliding on the ground? They're ignoring the background entirely, which is so funny because like in 3D, there's such a stigma against foot sliding. And then in 2D, there just isn't because nobody cares. The two worlds are colliding. There's a 3D animation with foot sliding and no one cares. It's it's not bound to world space rules. It's screen space rules, baby. This is so good. Just look at this pose, bro. The silhouette here is gorgeous. Damn, look at the screen wipe. Boom. Transition. Look at this smear. This smear is so good. Dude, just look at this, man. That's wild. Okay, Ambi, what do you got? Yeah, she's got this super anticipation throw thing at camera move, which by the way, also parented the camera. And look, there's only a couple of frames here too, which is cool, but there's actually multiple frames on the inside of this shape, but the actual shiny part of the shape is lower frame count. That's a really cool idea. I might steal that idea. <laughs> the squash and stretch here is huge. Look at her torso. That's not how long her torso is supposed to be. And then very, very squashed here. And then everyone else does the same thing. Look at this. Boingo, boingo, just straight up. Then Ambi does it as well, but in a more subtle way. That's what's so great about this concept. Squash and stretch is actually not always stretching beyond the normal limits. It's also just, hey, I'm elongated here and now I'm squashed here. And so that bounce right there is so well done and so well transitioned with that rotation. And it continues to bounce a little bit more. Boom, boom. Two more times that whole time. And even Billy is bouncy. I mean, it's just incredible. This is a small thing, but look at the attention to detail here. His eyeballs shake inside of his head. You see that? So his eyes come up and then they, they shake inside of his head. They're not stationary. That's so jello we do. <laughs> Look how far Billy is. It's so funny. Yeah, impact frames. Woo! Look at that, bro. God, that was so good. Then we should do another ZZZ animation. It's just so fun to animate. Hey, if they want to do another one, I'm happy to do another one. <laughs> like Hound! Dude. Oh my god. One shot, one take. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my god, Corin. Yo, what the hell, dude? This is so it. It's so well animated. Hey, hey, it's Alan. Oh, 
Oh, that pose, though. Woo! God, what the hell? Damn. When was the last time you guys saw a game cinematic that has a pose like this with this camera angle? They are so unafraid of low focal length camera angles. This is literally a JoJo pose. It's the most dynamic pose you can think of. And then they go straight to his face. Facial appreciation. I've talked about this before. Just not being shy about showing your character's faces is great for a video game. This kicking animation, like, bro. Same thing that we saw with Yabi earlier. Holding these poses. Look at these smears too. Look at that. That's gorgeous. This is a cool trick. They're jutting out his hips specifically to make his legs look longer. That's crazy. Crazy. That's so fascinating. This looks broken in 3D, but in a 2D thing, it would look great. So it's like exaggerating these kinds of shapes and stuff that don't make a whole lot of sense physically. They pulled off so well, dude. That's a wild shot right there. <laughs> One thing I will say is you don't see him land, which is a little weird. It does feel a little bit like he doesn't touch the ground here. And this is because he's parented to the camera. If I were to improve this shot, I think realistically he would go down a little bit lower because you don't just, you just don't see the floor clearly enough to say for sure that he touched the ground. Like this feels like he's still floating. Dude, this is such a great reveal just from a directing standpoint. What, what a cool effect he's running he's running he's running and then she picks him up from behind where you can't see alexandrina come up from behind and it's a, such a nice reveal yo did whatever this dog is doing over here is wild just look at the anticipation for this hand it was hooked bro look at that he's wrapping around he's locked in that's wild this pose is so short but so good look how clean this silhouette is this is the reason why it's so good every single limb is perfectly highlighted with the silhouette you can see everything just are they respecting the 180 degree rule oh yes absolutely one important fact about the 180 degree rule is that it's only relevant with cuts. So if it's a one shot take, it doesn't actually matter and you can do whatever you want. It's so good. Let's take a look at this next one. Dude, I love that reload animation. What, dude, this, these mo- Yo, what did that get? She's so close. That was badass. Okay. What? Yo, that pose, bro. Oh. Oh, they're so bouncy, dude. Is that weird to say when there's only women in this? I'm talking about the animation, guys. They have extra squash and stretch in this animation. See her torso stretching? Just a little bit, just for a couple frames, and then it squashes back again. That makes all the difference, dude. This is a great pose, too. I just appreciate the standing poses. Just imagine the exact same pose, but her thing is just like here. If it was like here, that doesn't do it. But right there, chef's kiss. This is so good. Look at this right here. So this is what's really, really cool about ZZZs. They are not afraid to break their bones, right? So this is like a very high anticipation, very high drag move which feels fantastic that sounds so bad they're not afraid to break bones break the bones of the animators and that's why it's so good it's the threat of physical harm and of course we have to talk about this pose bro literally the poses in this game are gonna kill me they're literally so good look how clear the silhouette is no part of her body is unclear at all absolutely gorgeous what's next <laughs> Interesting. You have my attention. Who's this character? I don't know her. That's terrifying, dude. That's terrifying. I see. This is right before the Miyabi cutscene. Gotcha. Oh! <laughs> so good! Again, with the amazing pose here. Look at the hair, bro. And then this. Not only are the arcs fluid and solid and everything, and she feels super skilled, and they add smears here. They just show a complete mastery of movement with Miyabi. Just a complete stopping of her momentum with a really, really still, stoic, and badass pose immediately after jumping. Nobody does this. It's so good. Okay, so obviously Zenless Zone Zero cinematics are incredible, but I want to see if their in-game animations hold up. So we're going to be ranking their combat and ultimate animations in the next video 
video. So subscribe if you want to watch that. I think it's going to be fun. And I break down even more animations in this video. So check that out.